Pete Yost here for the Unbuild It podcast with a word about our sponsor, Huber Engineered Woods. There are really three reasons why I think Huber Engineered Woods stands out, and it's a big part of why they're a sponsor of our Unbuild It podcast. First, they develop systems of products. The products are compatible and integrated. Makes our jobs a lot more easy in the field and when specifying. Second is superior tech support. There are really good website resources that they have developed for the application of their products, but they also have an outstanding uh, 800 number tech team that really knows their stuff. And the last is a really active technical research and development team with whom I've done a lot of work over the years and I have a lot of faith in the information I get from them when I have questions about product performance. So that's it. That's our high performance sponsor. Now onto the podcast. I'm Jake Bruton, and today on the Unbuild It podcast, I'm joined by three other builders that I respect, and we're going to talk about business. Let's jump right into the conversation now. I want to talk about money. I want to talk about cost plus, fixed fee, how you guys do billing and things like that. Uh, that's something that like, I feel like even if you buy books about how to run a construction business, it's very vague. Everybody kind of does it on their own, their own methods. You know, there's not a lot of people that have say gone to business school that then come into our trade for some reason. Uh, so I want to know like, are you fixed fee or are you cost plus? Who wants to go first? We are cost plus. 100%. Why? Why? I think in the end, I prefer the shared responsibility between both parties um, when it comes to cost plus. And not to say that our pricing um, is off or inaccurate. Um, we take a lot of time developing the pricing up front during our pre-construction time with our clients and architects and engineers. And we are sending out RFPs during that entire time while the plans are being developed at each phase, the plans are developed because we generally worked with architects. Um, but in the end, um, cost plus, I, I, I prefer the shared responsibility in cost plus and the, uh, you know, um, there's always the conversation about fixed fee. Well, you know, um, there's the ability to make certain amount more on certain line items client doesn't see or whatever. Um, I, I like the, I don't know, I'm a pretty linear guy. I like the, uh, the ability to know what percentage is being made on a project mm -hmm. um, and whether it can be high, you know, on a fixed fee or higher on a fixed fee. Um, to me, that's just more risk than I'm willing to take on as a company. And um, yeah, it's, it's worked out great for us. And most of our jobs come in pretty dialed when it comes to the final price. Um, and so when you say shared responsibility, you mean the clients have the ability to destroy the budget by choices. That's exactly right. And they, that, and that's clear to them. That's exactly right. Yeah. Okay. And there's certain choices or that are Or preserve the budget. That's right. And there are certain choices that are, are not made early on in a project. We try to get all those decisions made, but a lot of times those decisions change over the course of a project and they choose a different finish or something like that, or a new window location, you know, which doesn't happen all that often, but it's just so much easier to uh, deal with a cost plus. It's, it's just, you know, we'll put a price to it. We'll, we'll get them a, you know, a quote or an estimate of some sort for that change. Um, and then we apply the, you know, percentage generally to that. And it, it, I don't know, it all seems to work out fairly well. And our clients, all of our clients have enjoyed working that way. Um, we haven't had any pushback from any of our clients. Um, so it's just worked out really well for us. They know that up front. It's part of our initial conversation, generally. So I feel like our any good contract protects both parties yes. equally. Yes, correct. That, that would be the only reason to sign a contract. If it just protected us or if it just protected the client, that would be a bad idea. Right. So that good contract that protects both parties equally shouldn't need to be negotiated. And if you don't want to agree to those terms, it's fine. You don't have to to work with us, uh, as soon as the clients say, we have this list of changes, we just say, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, this is our contract and this is what it takes to work with our company. I'm with you, there yeah. might be a couple little things, but our contract is fair. Yeah. 
uh, our contract's fair enough that our contract attorney hires us for work on the same contract. So either he's playing the long game and he set up the entire thing so that he could get us to do a, a large addition on his house and be uh, ahead of us on the contract, or the contract's fair even when our contract attorney wants work done. So on the, the accounting front, we were fixed fee. My company was fixed fee for the longest time, for 25 years. Uh, and then we decided to make a change to go to cost plus. And I actually felt like I came to cost plus in a different way than a lot of builders. I feel like a lot of builders move from fixed fee to cost plus because there's this like assurance that you're going to be able to make money. If the contract just says, I get to charge you what we have in the project plus. Uh, but we came to it because uh, it made us more cost effective. If I don't have to bury a oh crap amount of money and my profit in the fixed fee, then I can just say, you know, this is where I think we're going to come in. We're going to come in at X. We're going to be plus or minus this most likely. Uh, so my proposal is X and hopefully we're as close as we possibly can be. But if COVID happens and material pricing goes through the roof and we have to switch to a different electrician because the other guy went out of business or whatever it may be, we're covered and there's no hiding numbers or dishonesty or, or anything like that. Um, I can completely see how fixed fee could, could totally work for us if, if our clients were pushing for that. At this point, we just say this is the way that we find works best for us. There's total transparency. We're tracking every penny. I had uh, an invoice that I wrote a couple weeks ago for a client that had two tickets on it that were both less than $2. And they're included in the entire thing because that is money that was spent on your job. And the builder's fee goes on that $2 or $1.98 ticket just the same as it does as the framing package. Yep. I, I don't know if it um, varies within different regions or marketplaces, but when you say fixed fee, just to clarify, you're talking... Fixed price, the whole contract. Yeah. So I, I think a fixed fee is like uh, just like a builder's fee, not exclusive of the cost of the cost, project. Fixed yes. cost, fixed fee, fixed yes. cost. Yeah. 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 So fixed fee in our market means if your house is going to cost $100 to build, I tell you it's going to cost $100 and you pay $100 mm -hmm. for it. Uh, the way that we operate cost plus, which is different than some, our aero building labor rate, my company labor rate, is a fixed cost, not uh, meaning I don't put any markup on it after you get paid, after we pay the labor rate. Uh, so my markup's buried in my hourly rate for my employees. And then everything that runs through our company from subs or suppliers uh, or engineers or whatever gets the plus on it. Uh, and the reason that we do that, the reason that we break out our in-house labor or our project manager labor separate is just transparency, just the idea that I want you to know exactly what you're paying for our employees to be there as well as the other guys. Uh, and the reason it's without markup and I buried it in there is I just felt like that was a more honest number. I bid a project against another builder in our market and they said uh, the other builder is more expensive, but he has like half as much in labor in the project as you do. And I said, well, he's missing something then, you know, how many hours did he have? And she said, oh, it's not broken down by hours. It's just by cost. And I was like, okay, did you ask what his labor rate was? Well, his labor rate is about half of what ours is. And I said, well, that doesn't make any sense. Like, I'm so confused as to how he really could be. And she said, well, you know, by the time you put 50% on the top of the labor rate, it's close to yours, but then your mark. And I was like, Oh, I'm not marking mine up. Mine already has everything that I need in it and he's going to mark his up. So he's playing games with the numbers. And I just decided I was just going to like, this is how we do it. And I'll talk about it every time with every client. This is what it looks like when I, every first invoice that I pass out is printed, even though an invoice might be 30 pages. Uh, and I go through the entire thing with every client on the first one. So that they know exactly how to read it from there on. Like we're, we're focusing on, we're never going to piss anybody off because of money. Yeah. Which happens sometimes. Sometimes people are upset that we spend as much money as we do, but we try to manage that that exposure, that risk and keep them as informed as possible, which 
if we're talking about transparency and we're talking about cost plus and this moving goalpost, we find that you really to have to you have to talk to clients every other week about the budget if you want them to be informed enough that you don't get to the end of the project and then they're upset about something. Yeah. Yeah. The shock. shock. Yeah. How often do you guys do budget reviews? Um, so we do budget reviews. Um, budgets updated every day. So we use a, a we use Builder Trend as, as the software we use. Um, particularly for the accounting side, because it's we are you know our office manager is updating that live every day. So as transactions are happening, they're automatically going to him. He's updating those into the budget, so our clients have access to that. So we tell them like you will have twenty four hour access to see this budget and what's happening and how it relates to the or your you know your actual cost and how it relates to the estimated cost. Um, we do a budget review actually just just usually once a month. Um, so uh, every the first week of the month, the client gets a full re recap of the previous month. Um, all the documents that, that we use for that, like checking account statements and draws, you know, we, we draw out every week um, for, the, for those weeks cost that come out with the cost of the project plus our fee on there. So we do a full month review, but we also tell our clients like you all, you can look at this live every single day and see and, and you can then bring it up to us if there's a question or what, what's happening. Um, it does go back to transparency. I think everything has been, you know, we, we built our company on transparency as well as the move similar maybe to you of going from fixed cost to cost plus, um, for seven years, I was doing fixed cost. Um, I felt like I was the one putting, you know, all the skin in the game, a client, I, the jobs we were doing, the clients liked the idea of like, this is all we owe. We're not going to pay a penny more unless we've approved something or we have a change order documented and we know exactly why. Um, and we were really successful in it. I mean, honestly, we, we had good margins in there and there were, there were moments that like we had to take it on the chin. You know, we made some mistakes, but, you know, my, my, my estimate was off. But there are also times where it's like, man, we came in way under budget and you get to keep that. Yeah. And so there's a, you know, for some people, fixed cost is a great way to, I mean, really kind of beat the budget or, or, or make more than maybe a normal fee. Um, I will say the more, the larger our projects became, the more complicated they became, but also as we were trying to advocate for transparency, um, and I never forget, like one of the last fixed cost jobs I did, um, I just, we have so much on our plates every day with trades and employees and clients and families and just things outside of work that I can't keep track of. I don't want to play a smoke and mirror game. I don't want to say the countertops were, you know. 15 grand is what the budget came in, but really we got them for, you know, 12 and we came under budget and there's a fixed cost, which means that difference is mine. Um, and I just, I don't do well, like at, at, at that, like, I just, I want to be open and honest. So I remember telling a client, like, you know, just honestly, like, well, how did, how did we do on framing? You know, well, we came way under budget on framing material, like thankfully, and, but framing labor went over. So, but it all made it better for us. And he was really upset, like really upset that we weren't crediting back that money to him. And I was really, it, it kind of, it kind of wrestled. I had to wrestle with it too of like, well, I mean, like we came under, you know, like, like maybe we should give that back. And, but in that type of contract, it's like, no, I'm the one with all the risk on it. Like I get to keep that. And it ultimately, it didn't sit well with me. And I, I, my personality does much better, just everyone knowing everything. And so I really, you know, I, I talk about a cost plus we, we went from fixed cost to offering clients. Like I would say, here's your budget fixed cost here's your budget cost plus. Like the same budget, and really it just came down to the bottom of a contingency fund. Like you can either give me this and I control it, and if I come under budget on anything, you don't get to ask, you don't even, you don't even, get, you don't even get to see copies of invoices. Which even saying that, I'm like, oh, this is really awkward. <laughs> like it's your house, it's your money, but you can't see anything. Um, whereas I'm like, here, you see everything. Why don't you hold this contingency fund? I still have to come, in my opinion, how we do cost pluses, this is the budget we've established. We've really tried to be, you know, we, this is what we do for a living. This is what we're professional at. So we want to be really good at what we estimate and feel confident in that. And we get our clients confidence in that. And I have to we say, we have to come to you. If we're going to be going off budget, we have to come to you ahead of time and explain why. Um, and, and we all have to be on the same page with that. Now, the reasons for that, I'm trying to think, I'm always thinking, what could a client say? Well, I'm not okay with that. Like market adjustments. Like that's out of my control and it's in our contract like that that can happen change the scope of work that can happen so there's really you know our clients i think we're in that pre-construction phase we're really talking a lot about transparency and trust and that do we want to work with each other so for us it got to where when i started offering a fixed cost and a cost plus contract i never had anyone go fixed cost they all said at the end of the day like 
yeah, let's hold this money. And we frankly still feel like we got some accountability from Jackson to explain why. Now, if I came back, for example, we ordered some really expensive doors and the order came in and we were hanging them and we miscut one and, you know, essentially, you know, boring and I have to order another one. That's on me. That's not like, a, oh, yeah, I ordered an extra door. And the client's like, why did the budget go up? Oh, well, we, we messed one up. So we had to order another one. Like, so we really have provided a lot of assurance for our clients. Like, this is the most, you will get the most cost effective, you know, uh, project this way. It also allows us to work more efficiently. You know, a lot of our jobs, um, while we have plans, the plans evolve and things change as clients are in that space and they're seeing these spaces, like they might want to change some of their, their decisions. So cost plus just allows this open conversation. It allows just the, like, this is what the trim carpenter is going to charge for this. It's going to take about this long. Are we okay with that? And, and we are, we are talking about, um, rather than like, here's an official cost to do it. Um, that just takes time. Most of our clients, you know, we'd say we need to go back to the office. We'll get this official change order written up, send it over to you versus just saying, we know the doors are about 600 bucks a piece. We know the heart, you know, it's going to take about this much to hang. Are we good with that? Like, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Great. If you can just kind of initial on this, like then we'll get everything going. And that took five minutes as opposed to a day to issue that out. Um, so we, we've moved completely now. While I used to offer it. Um, it's a long way of getting to the answer of we, we do completely cost plus now. And I've never had a client opt for um, fixed cost since we've kind of been opening it up this way. Um, again, that last client, when that was got frustrated with the fixed cost thing. He even, you know, when he really understood like what my fee was, like kind of like, no, it's at this rate because I'm keeping this contingency fund. It was a, uh, all of a sudden it was, well, I'm not okay with that. Well, you were, you were okay paying this much money, but now you're not okay with me making this much money. You're okay with the budget. You're just not okay with me making this much money. Um, and it just, for me, I want, I want everyone to get along. Um, even though that's how that contract works and like we all need to be adults about this, I realized that could be a point of just frustration possibly. And I wanted to just rid that. And so we've, the transparency part has really allowed us to really focus on cost plus. Um, I think it also brings a huge amount of trust. It does. I mean, the trust, um, the clients are spending so much money with you and they trust you with that large sum of money. Yeah. And so knowing that, like for me, like I want to do the best job possible yep. to, you know, spend their money really well. And yep. they know, you know, the thing about cost plus two is like you receive an invoice, then you can show them that invoice and you can say, this is how much, you know, the yeah. countertops are versus yep. how much do we have in countertops? Let's find something for eight grand instead of 15 yeah. grand. And, you know, so there is a huge amount of trust that is developed within that cost plus. So, yep. you know, one of the, one of the things that I think always gets pushed aside in the cost plus conversation that, that I try really hard to remember to say to my clients, I probably should add it to my list of talking points, is yes, if the job costs more, you're going to pay more. Mm -hmm. But if the job costs less, you're also going to say less yeah. and you're gonna pay less. And that, that simple like, you get the opportunity to reap the benefit as well, uh, that's spelled out explicitly in our contract. Uh, and I think that we get caught up in the, you know, a lot of jobs go over budget. A lot of things change, scope of work change. They end up spending more money than what they thought they were, or what we thought they were going to spend. And so it's, it's hard to remember always to go, oh yeah, some jobs are under budget and you paid less. And like you're saying that, that totally doesn't happen if this is a fixed fee contract. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. And then, I mean, I think for that, we actually really try really hard to even present things to clients of like, Hey, good news right now. Like we're under budget. Like if we go with the plan, you're under budget. If we do this, like you are making a choice that will change that. So, I mean, like it's uh, cause rarely, I think I, we don't, I don't want that reputation of like, ah, oh, it's over budget, you know, it's like, well, was it over budget or did we just change the scope? You know? So we're constantly having to talk with clients just about like, Hey, like here's like, here's good news. Like we're right on. We're actually under budget. If we do this, we're going this way. So we try to, we were talking earlier, you know, the, like the scariest thing or thing that I, I, I never want to have happen is that is shock sticker shock of an invoice and being like, especially at the end yeah. of like, Whoa, I thought like, this is, this is really where it came out, you know, and having, and because I think we're all going to be backtracking of like, all right, rather than getting in a check now, we're going to spend the next few weeks of reviewing documents and going back over emails and re trying to remember, remember this conversation. And then we sent this document out and you said you didn't want this and we did want this or whatever that back. And it, it becomes tense. Um, you know, our goal is when we submit that final invoice for it to be the expectation and for a client to be like, stroke the check. Like we're in our house. This is great. You know, it's what we expected. Um, so there's that, 
you've got to stay up on that communication, I think, and that, like you said, like the budget review. Um, our, our projects lately had tend to be a little bit longer um, schedules. And so we've kind of found like the month review, it kind of works, you know, but if you're cranking through and we have some projects that are a lot faster, like we need to do that every week almost, you know, because, you know, you're just cranking through some of the phases. But um, so, you know, we we have found a month to kind of be a good, you know, recap time. But if we're doing like a smaller project that might be only two months long, we probably need to be, you know, we'll send out those budget reviews and those invoices much more frequently. Yeah. Demo, rough in. Yeah. Yep. All the all the all the spots. Shane. I echo all the things you guys just said. Uh, one quick point that I didn't hear is I, I think in the and this isn't to say that a fixed price contract couldn't be successful for a lot of people. But we spoke earlier about trying to create this relationship of trust and confidence with clients. And I think it just kind of puts it misaligns incentives to me, whereas the cost plus contract uh, is perfectly equitable. I hate to use that term, but at the end of the day, each party is going to pay or be owed what's exactly fair. No one is kind of tipping the scales in their favor versus the other. Um, I operate on a cost plus a fixed fee basis. Uh, and it's not something I intend to hang on to forever, but I'm still a relatively new venture. And for me, it was a strategic decision to say, I don't want to as a new venture, bear all the risk of having to price this budget perfectly because it, you know, when I started my company, it wasn't the first house I'd ever built. I worked for another builder for a couple of years before launching my own venture. Um, so I was completely familiar with how the process unfolds and how budgets can escalate because scope changes very easily. But I wanted to offer pretty much the best contractual arrangement I could to a client to almost say to them, I structure my contracts as cost plus a fixed fee because my incentive is to build you the best house I can. And I need to be able to put the best materials and the best labor. And the way that this process is going to, un going to unfold, there's also going to be changes made along the way. I, I don't want to bear the risk for that. Um, you know, almost as a way to say, like, you have to be accountable for decisions that are made within this process. But if I can get enough of an advanced look on this project, I can determine what it's going to take me in terms of a management expense and all of my fixed costs and, and um, variable costs that I can, I can fix my fee so that if you decide to spend five grand more on your countertops, you're not going to get another change order invoice from me. Like my fee stays fixed. Um, and it, it is a concession that I have taken because certainly like there will be times when projects get extended as a result of changes that clients make. But from like a kind of negotiating standpoint, it always serves as a really like tactical way to fall back on the fact that if I'm taking a concession, I can then ask kindly or respectfully for clients to take concessions on certain things. I'll say to them, hey, like my my incentive is obviously to build your house as quickly as possible, as efficiently as possible. I'm not going to sacrifice quality for speed, but my incentive is to finish kind of on time, on target, because the longer I get stretched out, the more my margins get compressed. So I'm willing to do that if that's what it takes, but you have to know that that's the position I'm in. So I might ask you to do certain things for me if I'm going to go do that for you, if that are makes those, sense. Are those things outlined in the contract? Yes and no. Um, and like I said, it's not something that I intend to hold on to forever. But as a new builder in a competitive marketplace, I wanted to put forth a fee structure or contract structure that was like just a win win for the clients. It was like, wait, I'm going to get like the best team of trades with a pretty efficient builder's fee that's fixed. Like, how could I say no to that? Uh, and I certainly like my early projects, I, I had to cut my teeth a little bit. I had to price them very competitively in terms of the money I was earning to be able to get established in the marketplace. So it was a super like strategic decision I made to structure contracts that way so that I could manage the risk appropriately and not have to take on too much, you know, budgeting risk early on while still being able to script out exactly what I'm going to make and know how to grow and kind of give myself a roadmap on how to essentially, you know, expand beyond that. And I, I would say as I've become more established, I've definitely 
uh, increase that fee. So it's not to say that like the fee has to be like at a steady 10% of the budget or whatever. And I don't really, I, I don't develop my fee as like a percentage of cost. I kind of think of it through a different lens where I say, I need to understand what my costs are going to be. Like rather than even, even thinking about what the cost of the project is first, I, I, I assess a house, I assess a project, understand what the client relationship is going to be like. And I, I say, what are my costs going to be to build this house? How much am I going to have to pay myself? What, how much investment of time am I going to take? What's my insurance going to cost? What are my fund control fees going to cost? It's accounting service I use. And then what are the systemic risks of this project? Does it have a basement that's underwater? Is there a pool, roof deck? All these things that are going to become you know, possible risks in the long term that I have to warranty. What is, what is fair in order to compensate myself for those? And I kind of derive my fee that way to say almost your budget can kind of be whatever it wants to a degree. Um, but I feel like it's created a really equitable relationship with clients that they they see the way I'm structuring it, that it's just completely honest and transparent. And it's allowed me to actually, you know, get established pretty quickly, I would say. I think it's a great way to I think you've done a really good job of, like you said, valuing and protecting the client. In that scenario, I think it, I, what client wouldn't look at that scenario and say, like, this is actually really advantageous for us. Mm -hmm. um, I think mm -hmm. you've done a good job of that. And I can totally respect doing those in those kind of early years, you know, like really just to where, frankly, people aren't even, it's not just choice. It's, we're going to use Patriot Homes. That's who we're, that's who's doing this build. Um, how do you protect, as you're look? I'm just curious, like you said, you, you look at the cost in a different model. Like, hey, what are my costs involved in this? We don't look at the budget. Like, have you had any circumstances where this project you've estimated that, hey, this is going to be a, a 12 month project and it's, a, and it's an 18 month long project, you know, and like all of a sudden you've got six months of production that are kind of like almost out for the next year. Cause you're, you, you know, do you have the opportunity to like adjust that? Like when you're talking about. Yeah, there, I definitely have a clause in my contracts that say, you know, not verbatim, but it's something along the lines of like, hey, if there are scope changes that materially and substantially impact either the risk or time yeah. on the project, it's subject to mutual agreement by owner and builder. You know, this fee is adjustable. So it's more of like I'm putting language in there that says, hey, if we need to make a gentleman's agreement along the way, like we can hash it out and discuss it because you're exactly right. I've had two projects that were tied up in lawsuits with our city that not you getting sued. Not me getting sued. Yes. <laughs> Disclaimer, not me getting sued. Uh, there's a new ADU law in the state of California that is really hairy and sticky when it comes to adding ADUs into new construction projects. Uh, and it's been tied up in litigation for several years while I had two projects uh, that were tied up in that legal battle, you know, had nothing to do with uh, with me. But all parties of the project team knew going into it that hey, there's, you know, there's a legal issue that's going to have to be dealt with along the way. One of them got resolved pretty early in construction. The other one, it's still ongoing two years later, you know, and I 100 percent have had to absorb um, some concessions there in terms of like it's 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 stretched me out. But what I've decided to do is rather than kind of go back to the client and try and claw back for fees, I use my contract structure and the fact that I am a fixed fee and, and, and I have the ability to absorb some of that, right? Almost as a gesture of goodwill to say, look, I want to honor the deal that I put forth. Uh, you know, I'm not in this to make millions of dollars. Like, of course, I have to earn a profit to compensate for the risk. But for me, it's just about doing good work for a fair price. In the cost plus world, uh, have you ever had a client say like, oh, well, we chose a more expensive bathtub, but you're still just installing a bathtub. Why are we paying you more money to install that same bathtub? You know, my fee gets added on to the price of the item. If the item they chose was more expensive, therefore the percentage didn't change, but the money that our company garners off of that item goes up. Have you ever had anybody say, I feel like I'm being punished? I don't think I've had anyone say, I feel like I'm being punished. I think we work really hard in the beginning to establish that, that fee that we agree to on our cost plus contract. And that's what we stick with as we move forward through that. Overall, I think my company is extremely, we take the more generous approach on things. So even throughout construction, I think we're constantly thinking like, 
how can we take care of our client? But that fee has been agreed upon at the very beginning. We've established that fee based off the scope of work and we've reviewed the plans. And for most of our projects, we have been through like a pre-construction phase that has been very thorough and we understand the project and we say, this is what the fee is going to be. And that's what we stick with as we get through the project. When you say fee, is that percentage or is that a sum? So I have two fees. Uh, so uh, essentially our, our contract at the bottom has three, three line items. One is the cost, the subtotal cost of the, of the hard cost for the project, a management fee, and then my builder fee. So that, that is the cost plus fee. I don't put my fee on top of the, like the percent. I don't put that percent on top of my project manager. That's just a line item. Uh, similar to how Jake doesn't put his fee on his labor. Um, but I, uh, so those are the three things. You have the total cost of the budget, our management fee, which is a monthly fee, and then a uh, cost plus fee, a builder fee. And so when that, when that client, I've had it happen, and the, and the client said, well, our window package is more expensive. You talked us into buying triple pane windows instead of double pane windows. The price went up but you're still just installing windows, you're gonna charge us more money for that. And the, the entire conversation is you're, you're buying my risk. You're, you're buying me to assume the risk when you pay for us to make money on your project. You're, you're buying our warranty. Like in reality, you pay the builder for the warranty when you pay him to build the house. And now I have to warranty more costly windows that might be harder to come by that have higher risk for me and therefore no, the fee doesn't slide. We make more money on a job that we carry more risk on. And it's that simple. Yeah. So couldn't a client then say, well, why don't we, you know, why are you recommending? Could they um, say, well, you know, these European windows are a hundred grand more than the other windows. Why, why you know, aren't are you, I feel I'm, like you're forcing this sure. decision down our throat. Um, but at the same time, I think that comes back to the trust and the relationship that you've established at Absolutely. the beginning of the, the, the project. And so if they trust you, they know that, you know, my, you know, my biggest motivation is to gain their trust and just know that we have their best interests in mind. And, you know, whether that's the windows, the insulation, the wall assembly, everything, we're going to make, you know, these recommendations based on your best interests. Um, and sometimes those are not the most, those generally, those are not the cheapest, you know, or the most cost effective decisions to be made. And a lot of times not the most important decisions on the client's list. Too. That's right. If, especially if we're talking about envelope, there's a lot of people, right. a lot of clients out there that are, that are going to say, oh, well, more insulation, more air sealing. Yeah. And it's about informing your clients and being open and honest, it's like, yeah, being no. the expert that can communicate what the reasons yeah, like not as important as the tile you choose. Yeah. You know, it's... Sure. I'm assuming though, like all these things we're talking about, especially when it comes to envelope, you all are talking with your clients. We're not like essentially saying, oh, this is what we're doing and that's what we ordered and that's what's happening. It's a, uh, these are our recommendations. Like this is what's in the plans and maybe this is a rec recommendation that's different from the plans. This is a cost impact, but ultimately you all have to decide and, yes. and approve this, you know, so it's yeah. not like we're just running rogue and ordering things that we think are better, um, you know, without really the approval. It's really a, a chance to walk through with the client, educate them and then give them the chance to say yes, or I'm fine with the standard installation package. That's not important to me. Um, so I'm assuming that's kind of what we're all doing. See, I'm the opposite because I do fix my fee. Mm -hmm. So I have to take and absorb yes. some of those concessions when a client gets a more expensive appliance or more expensive window package. But aren't those change orders? Wouldn't yes that be a no. change of scope? Uh, yes and no. And, and some of those things, like I said, it kind of comes back to like that gentleman's agreement that if it's substantial enough in nature where like my risk in time is like a step function increase, I'll have that conversation with the client. But what I've found for me, especially like as a new venture getting started is for one, I, I, I kind of factor in the ability to take some of those concessions. Mm -hmm. Uh, I also scope out a project extremely thoroughly so that I am eliminating as much variability and volatility as possible. But one of the other things is that like it, it allows me to sell a client on building better a lot easier. When I say to them, hey, here's this kind of upgrade that's available to us. It's going to cost more. I think there's a lot of performance benefit in doing so. This is what I would do for my own house. There's also added value in doing this to you because you're not getting an additional builder's fee on top. Uh, so it's an easy way for them to kind of reach for these upgrades that allow me to push my building practices upward a lot faster. But the other part of it too is that I, I say to them, 
my ability to offer a fixed fee is contingent upon being able to choose each and every single trade partner I work with. That's how I mitigate my risk. Because if, if again, if you're increasing the cost of the work and risk is going up, I mitigate that risk and control it by saying to them, I have to choose the trade partners I'm going to work with to enact this construction. Absolutely. Um, that's the only way this whole sphere of a, of a structure stays put together. But as soon as you relinquish that control for me, and not only do I not get to compensate myself for additional risk, but then I don't have the ability to control it itself, then, then that, that's when, you know, it, it's a line I won't cross. So by limiting all of the question marks, by limiting all of the exposure elements where you're having to work with an unknown or unknown products, unknown sub, or uh, having too many unanswered questions in the contract, you're confident enough in your numbers that you can say, this is where we're going to be. And uh, I'm okay with doing this on a fixed fee. And here's how we handle it if there's a substantial change. Correct. Correct. And I mean, and again, I look at those concessions that I take as almost like an investment in my business because I want to be positioning myself to build the best homes and, and differentiating my product and service from everyone else. So to a sense, in a to a degree, if a client is willing to like spend more to get a better product, it's the, the concession in the fee that I charge, I look at as like an investment in my business in the sense that I want to be building that product. So I'm going to take that concession to do it because it's only going to elevate the type of homes that I build. It's going to improve my portfolio of work. It's your brand. It's my brand. Is, exactly. Is you, yeah. So I, I look at it as like a concession that I'm totally willing to take in order to build a business and build a brand. My name is Luke Mann with Range Line Homes. Thanks to Huber and these other builders that uh, invited me for this round table. Uh, specifically, I wanted to thank Huber with their uh, Zip System, Advantech products that we've been using since 2017. The support that Huber has offered us on site, um, as well as a quick learning curve for our framing crews to uh, install Zip System has been uh, great for our company.